Hey people, welcome to my latest video where we're going to be looking at oxidation numbers in a very specific way. I want to deal with ionic compounds like calcium nitrate that involve a polyatomic ion in parentheses and subscripts. I often find that when students are learning about oxidation numbers, it's compounds like this that can be super tricky. So we're going to break it down exactly how do you find the oxidation numbers for the three elements in a compound with a polyatomic ion. Thanks for joining me. Please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more of this kind of content, and let's begin. Whenever we're looking at an ionic compound and trying to figure out the oxidation numbers of its elements, the first thing we always want to do is separate the compound into the respective ions. As you can see here, I've separated the calcium from the nitrate. Now I also want to write their charges. Calcium, being an alkaline earth metal, loses two valence electrons and always has a two plus charge. Now nitrate being a polyatomic ion, we know from memorization that it has a one minus charge. So step one is separate your two ions. So now I'm gonna to start to talk about some of the rules that we use for determining oxidation numbers. And if you don't know what those rules are, or you're really just coming to redox reactions as a complete beginner, check out the video that I linked in the description. That's a longer video, and it goes through all the basics, the ins and outs of redox. But anyway, once we separate this ionic compound into the respective ions, there is a rule that says any regular ion, meaning an ion just composed of one atom, like calcium, well, its oxidation number will be the same as its charge as an ion. So in other words, because calcium has a charge of two plus, its oxidation number is plus two. So we've already figured out the oxidation number of one of our elements in this ionic compound simply by separating the ions apart. Okay, now we're gonna have to deal with this nitrate and there's a different rule for how we're gonna go about that. So polyatomic ions are actually molecules. They're covalent compounds with a charge. And another oxidation rule states that the members of any covalent compound, any molecule, well, their oxidation numbers have to add up to the charge of the molecule. Now, most molecules don't have a charge. Their charge is zero. So the oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. But for polyatomic ions, well, they always have a charge. And in this case, nitrate has a charge of one minus. So in other words, when we add together the oxidation numbers of the nitrogen and the oxygen, taking into account the fact that there are three oxygens, well, the sum of all of that is going to have to equal minus one. Okay, there's another rule that comes into play here. Oxygen is one of the few elements that has a rule dedicated to it all itself. And that rule states that oxygen always has an oxidation number of negative two. So you see, I already went ahead and labeled the negative two above the O. Now taking that rule, that oxygen is negative two, and the other rule about the sum of the oxidation numbers for this polyatomic ion having to equal minus one, I'm gonna write an algebraic equation. So I'm gonna say that the oxidation number of nitrogen, which we don't know, let's represent that with X. And when that's added to the oxidation number of oxygen, uh, which has to be multiplied by three because there's three oxygens, well, altogether that has to equal minus one because that's the charge of the polyatomic ion. Now it turns out that we don't need a variable for the oxidation number of oxygen. We know based on the rule that it's gonna be negative two. So now we just have to solve this expression for x, which should be pretty simple to do. We're gonna say that x added to a minus six, which is the product of negative two and three, equals minus one. So now ask yourself, what number would have to go here such that when it's added to a negative six, you have a negative one left over? That's right, the answer is going to be five. So it turns out that the oxidation number of this nitrogen, based on the rule that we just used, is positive five. So now we have our oxidation numbers for all of the elements in calcium nitrate positive two for calcium, positive five for nitrogen, and negative two for the oxygen. Okay, let me put another example up here that you can try on your own. So this is sodium sulfate, another ionic compound that has a polyatomic ion in it. 
I'd like you to pause the video here, try to figure out the three oxidation numbers for the elements you see on the board, and come back when you're ready and I'll go through the answer with you. All right, here it is. The oxidation numbers are plus one, plus six, and minus two. How did you do with that question? Well, if you followed the same steps I showed you in the previous example, I bet you got it right. First and foremost, we want to separate our two ions, and when we do that, we see that sodium, the alkali metal, has an ionic charge of plus one, so we know that's its oxidation number. Now, looking at the sulfate, SO4 two minus, we know that we kind of need to use this algebraic approach because the sum of the oxidation numbers are gonna to have to equal negative two. Now, in a similar way to the last problem, I only really need to think about the sulfur because there's a rule that says oxygen's oxidation number is always minus two. So I'm putting in the minus two here times four because there's four oxygens, setting this equal to negative two, solving for X, and that's how I got that X, the oxidation number of sulfur, is positive six. All right, folks, I hope this video helped you with this very specific, potentially tricky type of oxidation number situation. As I said before, there's a longer video that goes through all the ins and outs of redox reactions and why we use oxidation numbers. Uh, so please check that out if you'd find that helpful. And thank you so much for joining me today.